bad good. All right, welcome back to the channel. So this one's gonna be for the guys that actually want to learn something or see how uh, maybe body shops do it. Now, I've never worked at any other body shops. I'm 100% uh, self-taught on everything that I know and every way that I do everything, I've taught myself, okay? So if you take these uh, ways that I do things and then you go to an, work at another body shop or you try to get a job off of the way I do it, it could be, it could be wrong. Uh, my way works. This is the way that I train all my guys. Uh, anytime we start and I'll go over it with y'all. I guess just like kind of like you were a, a new employee because this might help you take up your projects and get better results or this might help, you know, you know, with some other thing, or maybe it's just a piece of knowledge that you wanted to know. So let's get started. First thing you're gonna grab whenever you're taping a vehicle or prepping it to mask it up is we're gonna be masking this thing with plastic uh, tape and you're gonna have a, a razor blade. So always keep a razor blade nearby. With the tape and razor blades and things, a pet peeve of mine is sitting them down. So I don't wanna see your, uh, if you're working for me, I don't wanna see your razor blade sitting down. And every single time you need to make a cut, you are looking for it, whether you laid it on the roof or whether you laid it on the cow panel and it fell on the floor or then you're digging, you know, you're picking one up off the floor because a lot of times there is like 10 of them on the floor in here. Um, you need to keep your uh, razor blade nearby and your tape nearby. So with the razor blade, what I do, a lot of people think I'm crazy. It takes them getting used to. But once you uh, get used to it, it's, it's cake, you put it in your mouth. So you take it and you put it with the, the blade side obviously sticking out and it will actually just stick right to your lip. It's a brand new razor blade whenever we start taping. So it's not like you're picking one off the floor and putting it in your mouth and you can still function perfectly fine and not lose it. You're not gonna get cut unless you've done something stupid and like put it in backwards. I think like one time I caught myself almost putting it in backwards or something, but like that never, never happens. So I always tell them, keep it right there in your mouth. That keeps both of your hands free where you can work efficiently and fast. And a lot of times when you're taping, you don't even need the razor blade. So the razor blade comes in more handy on the uh, plastic part of things where I'm masking plastic and you'll need a brand new one. But I'll always bring one into the booth whenever I'm starting to tape. And a lot of times I'll lay it down when I'm taping because again, you won't really need it. Um, but as soon as you're starting to run plastic and you're taping on plastic and cutting plastic, that's when it's very important to keep it on you. So the combination of tape that we're using is going to be three quarters, inch and a half, and two inch. That's gonna be the, uh, the combinations of tape that we use. I rarely use the inch and a half, so we can go ahead and put that to the side. Um, you might need that on some situations. If you have a vehicle that has the plastic uh, piece across the top, a lot of times that fits perfect to tape right there. Or if you're trying to tape something small, um, I don't think there's anything on this car that we're gonna be using the three quarters but I figured I'd bring it in here and show y'all so you know what I do keep in stock and what does kind of come in handy. Three quarters is excellent also if you're having to tape something and you need to get the bin um, to go around it, but I will show you another trick on that also once we start taping up. So yeah, I don't think nothing on here is gonna need to be three, uh, three quarters. And normally that's the case is normally we don't have anything that is three quarters. So I use a lot of inch and a half, two inch. The two inch is gonna be for back taping and cover stuff like that. But if you go work in a body shop, from what I hear, they might get all pissed off and be crying about it. Two inch costs a little bit more. But again, I think speed chumps that money all day long. Um, what we're gonna use primary and what we go through the most here is gonna be your inch and a half, inch and three quarters, whatever it is. I just measured it and forgot. I think it's an inch and a half. Um, we're going to trim everything out. So what we're going to do is trim everything first and then we'll cut our plastic and go back and attach that down. That's just, just how I do it. So let me throw you on the head and we'll start taping some up. 
All right, so I'm gonna try to make sure y'all stay in uh, frame the best I can, being we're doing up close. But you can start your inch and a half, and all we're gonna do is run the perimeters. Now, whenever I shot primer, what I did, I have not pulled his clips out of here because some of them are buried in urethane. So when I shot primer, what I actually did was I went like this, okay? All the way over to the body, basically. Um, you can see now we're over here instead of way over here. So we want to now get paint on this little tiny edge right here. Uh, we don't want to protect it. I didn't want to get primer blowed all up in there, so that's why I did that. Now when you bend around your tops up here, we'll actually do this one backwards. Normally I like, no, we'll start this way. Normally I like to go from the center like this and pull it towards me. That's just what I like to do, it's more comfortable. Okay, and when I tear these off, normally I'm tearing off pretty long distance. The more you tape, the more you'll be able to just look at your distance and measure it. So sometimes I'll bend that corner like that, or like I'll actually bend it. I'll show you on the other side where I bend it, or you just take your razor blade real fast. Keep it in your mouth. That's one moment that I would leave it in the mouth and not um, laying on the car. But being I'm trying to talk to y'all where you can hopefully hear everything, we're gonna lay it up there. Um, then again, like I said, I always pull from the centers out, and this time I'm pretty much taping on the edge of the glass so that I can get paint up inside that channel. Whereas when you're priming, you're gonna tape different and you're gonna tape a little farther. Now, when we tape this down here on primer, of course, I tape a little farther back. As you can see, you can actually see my tape line right here um, because I wanted to get primer on all of that. So we'll go over here on this side and we will actually uh, bend the corner on this one. So you'll cut you a long piece and just start from there come around and you'll hold your finger on the outside of the tape and use your thumb and kind of pull the inside up okay like that that's going to help you bend the corner because obviously your outside is what needs to be stuck and then you have to relieve the inside of the pressure because the tape don't stretch and then you can stick it down like that so that's how you can bend the corner make it pretty fast when you're going same thing on the bottom. We're gonna just barely overlap the glass just a little bit. We don't wanna get it on the glass. If you get it on the glass, it's okay because it will come off with a razor blade, but you don't wanna get it on something else that you're not supposed to get it on, you know, that's not glass. If you tear your piece too long, try not to tear too long a piece, but if you do, I tell my guys, so sometimes I'll look over and they'll be doing this right here, trying to tear this. Dude, just stick it because the amount of time, the second that it takes you to tear it, instead of sticking it, you could have already been slinging more tape somewhere else instead of wasting my time um, trying to tear off that little piece. So, also sometimes you could take your tape and what we'll do is we'll put it between our knees if we're in a situation that we can do that. Right now it's a little more efficient to just lay it right there on the roof but if you're taping down low or on the side of the car or some item that you can't uh, lay it on something, then just stick it between your knees. Now, if you have a really small wrist, you can actually put the roll of tape over your wrist. I'll show you all that also. I see a lot of tape, uh, painters doing that and I can't comfortably do it. So I just don't like it. So I don't do it, I'll lay it down but I'll show it to y'all because I can do it. So you're basically just going to, I barely fit, man. Let's see here, let's do it on, uh, yeah, let's try it like that. So it rolls like that. So over your wrist where you got it like that, and you'll do that, and then they come in there and tear that. So you'll see a lot of people doing that for speed, but again, I don't know. The, the tearing it part is what bothers me. So if that works for you, cool, do it. I don't like it. So this is gonna be an area that's gonna get back taped and face taped. So what we're doing right now is face taping, which is when we're taping on the face of a surface. Uh, back taping is when we are taping on the back of a surface. So we're gonna face tape our glass 
Now I'm going a little over the edge. Okay, so there's our windshield. Our side windows, these are getting painted black with the uh, trim of bumper paint, but we obviously have to tape them up for the, the paint job. So we're just gonna run our tape right here a little bit in. We're not gonna paint all of this stuff. We're gonna kind of tuck that one underneath there like that. We're gonna make sure we get fit our tape up in there nicely. So we're gonna keep it just like the factory did. And we're just gonna break it right there on that, on that pinch weld that's up in here. That's where the factory stopped the black. It looks like, so that's where I'm gonna stop my black. See like right now I'm throwing the tape between my knees instead of sitting it on the roof because the roof is farther away. So I wanted to pull that tape up a little higher on that one. And right here we're gonna tape this chrome trim. Normally you just barely overlap your tape. That way, barely overlap it just a little bit. That way you don't get the edge, paint all over the edge. Again, we're gonna follow pretty much the factory body line, even though I don't like it a lot there. And then you're just gonna make sure that you have all your chrome covered, everything's covered up. Tear this little piece of scrap off, make a triangle point right here. What this is gonna do is we'll mask our uh, glass up. We'll mask this little uh, foam protector piece up for vibrations, I'm guessing, so that it don't get paint all over. And this also is masking our holes up so we don't get paint in the car. Um, our trim piece, you know, comes to all the way here. So we've got plenty of paint coverage on the edge. We don't need, uh, there's no reason we don't need to paint all that. It's already got paint on it from the factory. So we're gonna just overlap. When you're going over edges like this, make sure you take your fingernails and push in there so that that stuff is nice and tight as you're walking the tape around. We're just gonna fold that excess. Same thing with here. Make sure you push it down in there. And then it just is what it is wherever it meets. There's no reason to waste your time cutting that straight or anything like that. We're gonna come and back tape, which is on the back side, all of these holes because we don't want um, a lot of paint up in the cowl. I talked about it on the other video, how there's uh, old paint up in there that wasn't sticking and it was blowing all out. I did scotch write all that, but I plan to just probably hit that with some rattle can. So we wanna just back tape all this stuff. So this is an example of back tape on here where you come from the back side and you basically tape it like that. So you're taping on the back side and that when you go to mask that, you're gonna do it different. You're basically gonna be sticking something to the tape versus taping something to the item, if that makes sense. And we'll show you uh, whenever we drop plastic. Well, y'all better be happy that I'm doing this for y'all because it is hot in here. Normally I'd put a freaking um, fan in here to get a little airflow in, even though the only bad thing about the fan is that it sucks in dust. Uh, we also put the AC unit in here sometimes. So we're gonna back tape all of this with our two inches uh, where you come on the bottom side, okay? And you just tape from the bottom side and you'll see this will all make sense when we go to put plastic down and you'll see how uh, this is actually really nice to do it like this. Now these arms, we're just gonna tape around these arms so we can actually get some paint on them. Um, we're just gonna back tape these, which again is just where you're taping on the back side of the panel. So if you notice, I only back taped half of my um, trunk area because I don't want my hands hitting all of this right here while I'm trying to tape the headlights, the tail lights. So I'm gonna do the tail lights first and then we'll go back. So we're gonna come in here on the doors. We're gonna back tape these to the back of the flanges. When you get right here to your molding, I'm gonna kind of roll it inside. Probably best if you just take your moldings off, your interior trim, but I'm 
I'm gonna come down here. We're gonna back tape this. Sometimes these can get really hard. Be careful because some of the spot welds can have jagged edges on the inside. And you can cut your finger really quick if you're running it along the edges too fast. We're gonna put a little piece of 45 right in here. And we're gonna go ahead and try to see if we can get something up in here for this one. I wanted to show you on these pieces how I taped these. Uh, this was way up in the dash and we were gonna take this off. But then when I looked up in there, I was like, let's just tape it. So a lot of times, some of us painters, not the ones that are like uh, God, the ones that are like really amazing and comment and say that you're a hack, you know, or different things like that. They don't do this, but a lot of us do this because we just, we don't want to take stuff apart. Um, when you've got a project this big, you actually get tired of taking stuff apart and you'd rather just sling a little tape that you can unpeel it because when we're done, we just unpull the tape and we're done. Like, there's no putting nothing back together. So on pieces like that or antennas, if you're gonna tape them, tape one side flat, other side flat, and then just roll it. Don't wrap it around like this. Please don't do that, that's a nightmare. When anybody sits there and wraps that crap around like that, it is such a freaking nightmare to undo. We're gonna tape the door strikers. Uh, there's gonna be people that are gonna lose their mind about this. Uh, I actually got into a debate over somebody on my personal car, my comment, I stripped it all the way down farther than this actually because uh, the dash was out of mine and everything and I still didn't pull the door strikers out of it so uh, that was on Facebook when I posted that and uh, they lost their mind so Randy's car when we did his car uh, we did the we did pull the door strikers out of it because I knew it was fiberglass doors and somebody had been in there and jacked with it um, with washers and all this other crap. And so I just pulled them out, painted behind them and reset them because I wasn't happy with the way the door was closing anyway. So I didn't discuss this with the customer, uh, but this little detail right here, I kind of like, shouldn't be a problem. We are going to tape up the factory sticker on this one. Now on the doors themselves, we uh, are not, we're just gonna paint right over the ones on the doors because it's the VIN number and all that crap and it was in kind of bad shape, like it wasn't that appealing to the eyes. It had some wear and tear for sure. This one, this decal inside the door is in really good shape. And we'll more than likely pull that on the clear coat, possibly, so we can clear coat over that, bury it in the clear. So this one we're gonna switch it up and I'm going to face tape right here on my molding. So you can see I'm taping a little past it and then folding it in with my hands. This is the interior trim. So we're just gonna face tape to it because I don't feel like taking it out. I loosen the screws up to get the seal out, but I don't wanna actually take it out. Now on a normal vehicle, let me show you something real fast. If you want to uh, back tape or if you need to face tape on a seal, if you do, you can see these spot welds, okay? They're kind of messy. Split your tape on your spot weld, okay? Like that, if you need to face tape it. Don't tape over to here, you know, or up to there because your spot welds are never gonna be seen. So when cars are built, the spot welds are always hidden and put underneath something. So if you split your spot weld with your tape like that, and then you're guaranteed to bury your tape line, okay, where your line, where your paint stops. There's guaranteed something to hide that. You don't ever wanna go this, this way, past the spot welds too far, and then when you're done with the paint job, you peel it off and then you can see that line. So always split your um, spot welds if you're face taping, something like that. So your box of your plastic has arrows on it, normally pointing out the direction that it needs to go towards the car. It's not always right. But you need to check. The most important thing is that the plastic says paint this side. That side needs to be up. So with doing one that's back tape, it's a little harder because you don't want your plastic to stick to the back tape. A back tape job actually makes things 100 times harder. That's good, Ed. You can cut that. 
Okay, your plastic's gonna have an edge right here in the center where it says paint this side. There's gonna be an edge there. I've already felt underneath there and pulled it. So I'm gonna pull mine out and then paint this side. I want it stuck right in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this deck lid. This is the part that gets annoying because your plastic sticks to the tape before you want it to most of the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this trunk lid. Since it's gonna stick, I'm gonna go ahead and just get it stuck. You want this kind of tight if you can. You kind of get bragging rights if it's back taped nice and tight. But it is hard to get everything done, so that's not bad at all. I can get the rest of it, Ed. I just needed it walked over there. I can hand, yeah, if you just leave it up like that. So again, you kind of want to make sure that it don't stick to the, the tape where it makes all this a pain in the butt. So we're gonna go ahead and stick our center and just kind of go ahead and pat this down. So you're patting, your, you're pushing your plastic to your back tape. This is what's really nice about black back taping is that this doesn't have to be face taped now. This is basically done. So on your sides, let's see here. We need, let's go ahead and make a relieve cut. This is where your razor blade is supposed to be in your mouth. Now I don't know where mine is. So I think I do. I think I laid it on the cow. Yep, laid it on the cow. So I'm put razor blade in the mouth. We're gonna make a relieve cut right here so that I can pull the side of the vehicle down without it hitting my arm of the car. We're gonna go ahead and cut this right on the arm so that you can wrap your plastic around it. Basically like that. All right, now we're gonna come over here and hold our plastic up. Make sure it's unfolded. Make sure it's nice and square and you're gonna come down like this. This is where you wanna try to keep it tight. So we're gonna stick our top first and then we're gonna come and kind of tighten our bottom up and stick our bottom. Over here, we're gonna pull our wrinkles out just like you're making a bed. And that one's pretty nice. You can see how it's got some tension on it, that's nice. It side's a little loose, but this one is not a traditional, 100% traditional back tape job because normally you'd have back tape going all around this but we are gonna cover up the window too, all with one piece. I'm going to pull my wrinkles out of it decently. These are the little, the tighter, okay, so the tighter your plastic is, the less it can blow around in the booth or when you're painting in your garage or your front yard on the weekend. Don't let the fire marshals know. Um, the less it can blow around from the wind or the fans that you're using, your box fans in your garage that you put underneath the garage door to suck all the paint out, um, the tighter the plastic, the less it can move around, meaning the less it's gonna shake off dust. So as it gets oversprayed settled to it, then you don't want it moving all over the place, shaking dust all, over, all in your clear. You have to use painter, this kind of painter's plastic. You cannot go to Home Depot or Lowe's or nothing like that and get a uh, plastic that you would use at your house. Uh, if that pressure washer in the background is loud, I apologize. I am sweating my butt off, so I try to open half the paint booth to keep a little bit of flow. But you don't wanna go get uh, plastic that you um, mask up your home with because it won't. the paint won't stick to it. So the reason why this plastic says paint this side is because it's designed for the paint to stick to this side. It'll stick to this side. If you accidentally get this plastic upside down and you're, you can't read where it says paint this side and it's backwards, like right now you can see how we can read it, okay? It's wrote correctly. If it was to put on the other way, then it would be backwards. Then the paint won't stick to that side and it will literally 
um, it can blow off in the middle of your paint. So you'll shoot your base coat. Another thing you can do on these legs is you can just pull your plastic over them and kind of tear it like that. Even though I like to cut it normally. You, when you shoot your base coat, then it, it, it will it'll be slightly stuck very loosely. And then you go to do your uh, clear coat. The air pressure from the paint gun can actually knock the base coat off the plastic and put it in the in your freshly you know shot clear coat, which would be trashing your clear coat and make your job look like crap. So that's why it's important to use the correct uh, plastic. Um, you don't use paper no more. That's kind of outdated. If you see somebody painting using uh, paper or they're masking up a vehicle using paper and they're telling you that they can paint your race car, you probably want to run. So um, I, I'm not the best and the most professional, but I do know that uh, we don't use paper to mask up a whole entire car anymore. So you drop plastic, it's way more efficient. Um, you don't have to worry about the edges of the paper leaking and getting all over the customer's car because it's completely covered with plastic, all of the panels. Nothing wrong with using paper, it's just an outdated method and I wanna make sure that you're aware of that. So uh, you can paint at your house with newspaper. The problem with newspaper is that it has little tiny holes in it and so it can leak uh, paint through the newspaper also and get all on it. So if you are absolutely insisting on using paper then at least go get some masking paper which comes in a roll i have some in there if you don't have a paint supplier near you you can get masking paper at lowe's home depot stuff like that uh just any regular paint masking paper will be fine you just really you really want to try to use plastic you'll pull a little tension up on your plastic you're not necessarily running your razor blade on your tape you're trying to run it right on the edge of the metal in a perfect world but every now and then you know i'll even mess up and accidentally cut my tape and then uh, that is pretty hard to uh repair like that one right there i just cut through the the top layer but there's another layer underneath it that sealed it right back up and then we're just making sure that we take the excess and push it down You want to make sure that nothing is sticking to the edge of the panel because then obviously paint won't get on it. So on this face tape area right here, I'm going to just run the razor blade down about a half of an inch on the inside of the plastic and then I'll show you all what we're going to do. Normally that razor blade again would go in my mouth, but I'm trying to make sure y'all can understand me clear. So now we're just gonna take our tape and tape it to that. You could go underneath this, try to go underneath it. So the reason why you trim out first, which is where we went around and trimmed out, is number one, you can cut on top of that tape that you laid down. So you don't cut on top, you don't cut your item. But number two, when we trim it out, we're focused on making sure all of our edges are covered. That way, when we go and do this process, we can go a little faster and we can just make sure that we get, uh, you know, the tape, the plastic to the tape. Since I'm kind of pulling my plastic away from the tape at a 90, my razor blade is pretty dull right now. So I'm having to kind of pull the plastic up where it's kind of cutting the, uh, using the center of the razor blade to kind of cut the plastic. It is crazy, you wouldn't think it would, but it's crazy how fast that plastic doles out these razor blades, you know, and from running it across the edge of the metal and just stuff like that. Uh, cutting back tape just, it destroys your razor blade extremely fast. So I'm only gonna do this door for y'all and maybe the trunk and then that's gonna be it on this video because you get the gift, you don't need to watch both doors. And I'm sweating my freaking tail off with this GoPro on my head. So all of our back tape right there that we just did is done. 
See, we don't have to do nothing to that. Now we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna pull these wrinkles out of this window. I really need a new razor blade. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there and I'm gonna go ahead and tape because I don't want, I don't like seeing guys go and cut it all out and crap moving all around on you and not keeping your plastic nice and tight. So that's the reason why I'm gonna stop and go ahead and basically I just do one flat at a time. So one straight run. Now I'll come back and cut this. I mean, see your razor blade should be cutting that. That's crazy. And y'all have watched live how much I have cut with this, which is barely anything. Before I move on to the other side, I will be switching the razor blade. So being this top is just a little area, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. But you can see what happens is, then stuff starts moving around. So then you're left doing this crap of laying stuff back out. So that's why normally it's better just to do one area at one flat straight run at a time and then cut your next area so things don't move on you. And see, this, is go this goes so fast because we don't have to worry about lining. We don't have to worry about our edge or nothing. We just got to make sure we bridge our plastic to our um, thing. So the back tape back here, this is pretty easy. Same thing with your door. Is you're just gonna come around and cut it out. Make sure that as you're going, you're sticking your plastic. Or make sure your plastic is stuck. You really wanna make sure your plastic is stuck beforehand, but sometimes it will not get 100% stuck. You just have to just confirm. And we will tighten up some tape around these legs. Again, please don't cut your tape because you're, if you cut your tape, you have literally just cut it on, I kind of wish I would make a mistake and cut it so I could show y'all, but I don't want to purposely cause myself more work. But if you've cut it in an area that is extremely hard to get it to close back up, Sometimes you have to just leave that little slit in there. Uh, paint's not really gonna leak on the inside, especially if it's small. Um, sometimes if it's an area that don't matter, such if we accidentally cut it right here, we could go ahead and uh, face tape across this and up this little flange right here. Doing it like this with this back tape method is, I mean, it's just nice because it's sealed up, it's done. Like we don't have to go back and retape it. Uh, your edges are nice and crisp, so we're getting paint all the way to the edge because we're not face taping. We don't have no hard line because the paint's going all the way to the edge of the metal. You just get a better job when you take the time and do the back tape. But, I mean, you can't back tape everything, so like a windshield and stuff, like you cut and really back tape that um i'm going to finish taping this up i got the windshield to cut out the back windshield just like we did the front windshield and then i got this side to cut out just like we did the other side and then this is done nothing else to tape uh we got wheel covers that go over the wheels that they just slip over you can get them at harbor freight or amazon or whatever you they're probably rv wheel covers or painting wheel covers so i will catch back up with y'all here in a few.